Now, Familia, this isn't a typical full-length video I do to tell victim stories because this situation is still very, very fresh. And although I don't know the victim personally, I do know a lot of people who knew him personally. And when I say the Bronx took a hit with this one, I'm not lying. So let's get into what I'm talking about. If you're watching here on YouTube, you probably already saw me post about it on my community wall here. Or maybe you saw me post about it on Instagram. Maybe you might have saw me post about it on TikTok. In fact, I really only reactivated both my Instagram and TikTok because of the situation right here. You see, a young man whose name is Michael Woody has officially been confirmed to be deceased as of just a few days ago. And so what what happened? Well, according to the details that's already been put out there, Michael was in a relationship with this young lady right here, Kashauna Watts, and they lived together. Apparently, the relationship between Mike and Shauna had become volatile, but not on Mike's part. Kashauna had been the one who allegedly was abusive towards Mike, and I say allegedly because obviously I do not have the facts of the situation. But this is what's been being said. And so apparently Mike got fed up with the drama because he is reportedly not someone who's about drama. He's not someone who liked problems and issues. He was a really easygoing kind of guy. And on Saturday, November 16th, he went to the apartment they lived in together in the Bronx to gather his belongings. Now here's where things get kind of fuzzy because at some point, Kashana, who is the correctional officer at Rikers here in New York, called her father and her uncle to come over to the apartment. I'm not sure at what time she called them or what time they got there but when the men came to the apartment they viciously beat mike so bad to the point when 911 was called and the medics came to get him he was unresponsive i'm not sure who made the 911 call i saw some people saying shauna called i see some people saying it was an anonymous caller I'm not sure how long after the assault it took for medics to arrive on the scene, but either way, Mike was unresponsive when they got there. He was taken to the hospital and for a whole week, his beloved daughter, his family members, his friends were praying for him to be able to pull through. But it was just a few days ago on Saturday, November 23rd, when the family confirmed that Mike had succumbed to his injuries. Michael Woody was killed. Kashana Watts, her father, Kevin Watts, and her uncle, who hasn't been positively identified, are the ones who are responsible for killing him. Now, I mentioned to you how Kashana Watts is a correctional officer at Rikers, which, sidebar, it was said that she went to work the very same day of Mike's vicious attack, but hasn't been back to work since that day. But her father, Kevin Watts, is apparently a former captain correction officer who used to work at Rikers, but he was allegedly fired due to reports of excessive force. How wild is it that this man was let go of his job due to excessive force and is now being named as one of the people responsible for this young man's death? The NYPD put out a wanted flyer showing the three monsters on severe and still shots leaving and entering the apartment and if at this point you're waiting to hear a motive well that isn't very clear at this time there's some people saying that shauna simply couldn't handle being rejected and so she set him up by lying to her father and saying that mike was the one physically attacking her but at this time that's just a theory although a very believable one because why would you be so mad at this man coming to remove his items? He clearly couldn't have been abusive towards you or you wouldn't have allowed him back into the apartment to remove his items. Now, in addition to that, honestly, like I know a lot of times victims get the best backstories as to who they were when they were living on this earth. I know because I give the best backstories to them. You know, it's dependent on how people describe them to be. And only very seldomly do we hear about any flaws that a victim may have had. But when it comes to Mike, Mike was one of those people that a lot of people knew. And if you didn't know him personally, you know somebody who knew him. And there's not a single person who knew Mike who could say anything bad about him. Mike was just, you know, your typical New York City fly guy. He liked to get dressed, step out, have a good time, take care of his daughter, work out, support all his friends' movements, whatever business ventures they had going on. He was right there to support them, his family members. He had good energy everywhere he went. Like, you know, not for nothing, you could literally look on social media, any platform, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Not a single soul has anything bad to say about this young man. And mind you, just about a week before his death was his daughter's 15th birthday. And he was reportedly an amazing father who was very much present in her life. So imagine how that baby girl feels. She just spent her birthday with her father. Only for one week later, she would learn of what happened to him. And then a week after that, have to say goodbye to him. And then for the rest of her life, have to mourn him, knowing that he didn't deserve it. And knowing that a conniving, heartless woman is the reason behind all of this. 
And so this brings me to the killers. The problem that stands is that all three of these people are still in hiding. Kashona, her father Kevin, and her uncle are all on the run, hiding somewhere, and have yet to be produced to be brought into justice. And this is where I question the NYPD. These people are well tied into the system as correction officers. How is it that a phone hasn't been tracked? An IP address hasn't been tracked? Which, mind you, Shauna has been active on social media. Her Facebook page showed her being active on the site. You mean to tell me they're just that good at hiding? Is there somebody on the inside helping them hide? You know what I'm saying? And this is why people like myself and everybody else who has any knowledge of this situation has been asking the public to please share these people's photos, share this story, share the wanted flyer, because somebody somewhere just may recognize them and have enough of a heart to let the authorities know where they are and how they can be found. This is the power of social media. The power of social media has reunited friends, family members. It has tracked down people's jobs, all kinds of stuff. You know, at this point, for all we know, they're in a whole different state somewhere, hiding out in the middle of nowhere. But one thing about it, God reveals all, and they won't be able to hide for long. I'm Amanda Bossard. Tonight, a mother is calling for justice after she says her son was beaten to death and left to die inside of his own home. News 12's Valerie Ryan has this exclusive story. Michael Woody's loved ones described him as a light. He was just a whole vibe. He brought people together. His mom says he recently started a new chapter, moving in with his girlfriend. That chapter quickly ended when police found him unresponsive in his home at 1639 Fulton Avenue on November 16th. My son was killed. He was murdered. Miss Woody says detectives told her surveillance video captured two men walk into Michael Woody's apartment and catches them leaving 45 minutes later. Thea Woody, Michael's mother, tells us she fears a rough patch in her son's relationship may have led to his death. Investigators released this wanted flyer. Miss Woody identifies the woman as Michael's girlfriend, the man in the middle as her father, while the man in the baseball cap is unknown. I want all three of them to go to jail for this. No, no plea deal, no none of that. Because now his 15-year-old daughter is growing up without her father. A neighbor tells us they witnessed Woody's girlfriend leave the apartment and keep the door open. This photo shows the man in the baseball cap holding some sort of metal object in his hand. Miss Woody believes Michael was beaten to death. He was just so willing to just take his life from him like it wasn't nothing, like he didn't matter. He belonged to people. Ring camera footage captures Michael being taken out on a stretcher. My son, life mattered. It mattered. Police have not confirmed the cause of Michael's death and no one is in custody. In Claremont, Valerie Ryan, News 12, The Bronx. So I'll repeat myself again and I'll ask you, as you're watching this video and hearing my voice, to please hit the share button of this video. Take screenshots of their photos, the wanted flyer, and share it so we can at least be, you know, a smidge of a step closer to bringing justice for Mike. His daughter, his mother, his siblings, his family, all his loved ones deserve to have some kind of peace brought into their lives just knowing that these rabid animals will be answering for their sins. I'll end this video sending my deepest, deepest condolences to Mike's family. I pray that justice is brought forth sooner than later. I will be keeping up with this situation and giving updates as they come. And I will not stop doing as much as I can in any way that I can to do my part in assisting by bringing awareness to this situation. One more time, please share the photos of these people's faces. Share the photo of the wanted flyer. You never know who knows what. Rest in peace, Michael Woody, a.k.a. Mike Wood. This isn't over by a long shot. And of course, you'll never be forgotten.